There is an incredible amount of lore and flavor text in Stellar Blade's demo, which bodes well for the depth of the story in the full game. This video will cover every text from memoirs left behind by the Fallen, to crafting component descriptions, to enemy descriptions. Also, I put some timestamps so that you can scrub around the video using YouTube chapters if you're looking for a specific section. One last thing, there are screenshots of all the text in the description. So this must be eight or seven. Yes. This was the final battlefield of civilization. It was also known as a truly colossal city. In the fall of 2050, at the Eidos keynote, CEO Raphael Marx introduced the latest Exospine module and praised himself, saying, We have started making our own teachers, who in turn make even better teachers, and adjust and replace them according to our tastes. Mother Sphere? She was watching the scene in real time through the network. Gear modules provided a successful custom experience, but their performance was limited. As a result, Eidos company worked with its partner Tetrastar in order to produce low-level APIs and devices for higher-level modding. The motto for development was, change everything that can be changed. The deepening economic supremacy of mega companies centered on value chain monopoly sparked resistance. People were especially critical of the Exospine module saying it had very chips. They would say that big companies such as Eidos Company, Tetrastar, and Orca Aerospace Company slyly use and dominate machines to change human lives to fit their tastes. Shortly after the first gear module was released, many accused the company of selling tiny bits of scrap metal for hundreds or thousands of dollars. Once it was realized that the price was actually a great bargain, Eidos Company became a platform leader overnight as well as an icon of user centricity and innovation. Tetrastar originally opposed the form factor of gear modules and sockets. The company was concerned that cheap and easy gear modules would lead to cannibalization and adversely affect sales. However, as the modules became extremely popular, the demand for nano elements soared and Tetrastar's profits skyrocketed. The CEO, who originally opposed this, was fired without a second thought. Someone asked Oracle, Prophet, why don't you use any gear modules? Oracle replied that the devices should be given to those who truly need them. He also replied that he only plans, advises, and mediates within the presence chamber. Many people believe this to be true and praise the Elder's spirit of selflessness. In Zion, the memory sticks of the deceased are placed in the memory chamber, while the body is scrapped. Devices like gear modules from the bodies are returned to family members. If there are no family members, the sentinels will take the devices. No one has ever objected to this rule, since 80% of the dead were sentinels in the first place. Zion enjoyed prosperity for about a decade after its establishment. During that time, Junk dealers used gear modules as a sort of currency for important deals. Now that people live with the scrap metal they get from tearing down buildings and dismantling existing machines, they can only dream of such prosperity. Depending on its intended use, body firmware came in different types. The range of normal operation for gear also varied for each firmware type. This meant that you couldn't just pick up a module and use it. It was the painful reality faced by the citizens of Zion who were dumped on the ground empty-handed. In 2043, engineers at the Eidos company aimed to develop an efficient modular gear expansion design. Who could have known that this would be helpful after the world ended? There aren't many devices like this gear module that can help you survive in the wasteland. The Airborne Squad's combat manual recommends matching the exospine with its appropriate gear module. With an emphasis on flexible handling of situations, Mastery of all devices is a major doctrine of the squad. This means that there is no right answer or set standard in battles with the ever-changing Natibas. Modular gear expansion designs have been implemented in various fields, including military gear. The military gear uses state-of-the-art technology from the Orca Aerospace Company, and each module costs millions of dollars. It's currently a must-have device for all Sentinels in Zion. Shortly after the outbreak of the Liberation War, 
all of the Eidos Company's ground production facilities were shut down. Amidst the chaos, the facilities were ravaged by looting and destruction. Unsealed modules, chips, and parts were found all over the place because so much had gone missing. A kind of blessing in disguise when you look back on it. Worried about gear sockets that are exposed outside? Gear sockets are rated IP99, which means they are waterproof, dustproof, and protected from radiation and electromagnetic pulses. Mounting gear modules is a mechanical procedure that is also used for authentication. All data and energy from sockets and gear modules are transmitted wirelessly. The Airborne Squad is equipped with universal firmware customized by the Orca Aerospace Company. Thanks to this, there are no problems attaching any device or using any terminal or system. Mission operations can be continued using spare gear modules or supplies nearby. Abandoned by Mother Sphere, the survivors on Earth had to do whatever they could to survive in the wasteland. They often made unauthorized modifications, such as implanting chips in the gear modules or soldering jumper cables without adequate equipment. Occasionally, the devices they made were useful, but very rarely. Gear modules were also suspected of being wiretapped or having backdoors made by large corporations. Of course, none of this has been officially verified. The media denounced people who made such claims as conspiracy theorists portraying them as idiots who would put anti-electromagnetic pulse stickers on their gear modules. The maximum number of gear sockets supported by major manufacturers such as the Eidos Company, Orca Aerospace Company, and Tetrastar is 4. The reason for having a standard number of sockets is very simple. Having more than 4 sockets overcrowds the back area and hinders the aesthetics. Gear modules communicate directly with the artificial intelligence through a dedicated port on an expansion socket. While the modules are designed with performance benefits and ease of expansion in mind, there is one problem. If the gears are forced out of the sockets, it could cause data corruption or even bring down the entire system. When Zion's scavengers retrieve scrap metal from the wasteland, they shred through large chunks of iron by hand and cut them with cutters. Scavengers fear that delicate and expensive objects such as gear modules and nano elements will be damaged if they use machines or tools. As a result, this type of work is often very dangerous and slow, and has taken the lives of many. Some gear modules had a bug that caused the shield condenser capacity to be misread. Orca Aerospace Company marketed the bug as an intended function and avoided recalls by signing non-disclosure agreements with developers who worked day and night to fix it. As gear modules became wildly popular around the world, they also became a cultural phenomenon. People began to recognize these devices as must-haves, much like clothing, and began to think having empty gear sockets was like walking around naked. The body used by the airborne squad is a major upgrade in every way. Specifically, zero latency was implemented using quantum nerves to transmit signals throughout the body. However, the difference in speed between the gear modules and the main systems caused stuttering, so Orca Aerospace Company had to completely redesign the gear sockets. As gear modules became more popular, third-party compatible products that were not certified by the Eidos Company began to appear. Among such gear, there was a suspicious item called an Artificial Intelligence Amplifier that supposedly improved performance. This was one of the events that triggered the Eidos company to start whitelisting wearable devices. This is the Exotic Sense Collection outfit designed by Tetrastar CNT's lead designer, Galaxy Allen. It's said that the embedded nano elements are loaded with a malicious code that is like some kind of electronic drug so that you can boast enhanced speed. Children born on a starry night, go forth and fulfill your mission. Be proud, forever and always. Our future is in your hands. Children born on a starry night, a glorious mission begins. Illuminate Earth as beacons of hope. May you forge a path to the future. Nobody can stop you. Advance beyond tough areas and obstacles together with the adventurer. Of course, don't try to mess with the Natibas. Skin suits are outfits specially crafted by Mother Sphere. It covers the body of the airborne squad member and deploys on its own or expands and contracts depending on the situation. In other words, it's like a living skin. If you want something unique, it's right here. Cybernetic and abstract, 
It's light, beautiful, and above all, unique. Twist and drink. It's charged with a concentrated recovery paste and, therefore, its texture may feel thicker and harder to swallow than a regular potion. Twist and drink. As the recovery paste starts working, you might feel itchy, prickly, or strange. Orca Aerospace Company's AN2 Shock Grenade is a thermal pressure explosive for melee support. It emits shockwaves to scramble the interior of an organism's body. Of course, you shouldn't think that you can completely incapacitate monsters with these tiny bombs. Orca Aerospace Company's AN4 Pulse Grenade is an electromagnetic pulse weapon for melee support. Electromagnetic pulses disable Natiba's defense capabilities. How were these waves discovered? Maybe Mother Sphere has the answer. For when you run out of memory due to system dump files or when you want to reset the AEOS, the Eidos company has launched a DIY initializer to meet the diverse needs of its customers. It's easy, just hold it towards your head and press the button. Orca Aerospace Company's SD0 Biotic Field Generator is a first aid device. As soon as it's put down on the floor, it links with the surrounding WB pumps to force the optimization of the body. Whether this is really healing is debatable, but at least that's how it seems for now. Orca Aerospace Company's AN6 Smart Mine is an intelligent booby trap. It can be easily set up just by throwing it, and it automatically detonates when a Natiba's mine frequency is detected. It's smart since the mines won't detonate when they're stepped on by allies. Orca Aerospace Company's AN8 Sonic Grenade is a noise generator for melee support. The sound waves traveling in all directions resonate with skin, muscle, and bone, causing Natibas to falter. What about the person who threw it? Muting is the answer. Orca Aerospace Company's AN1 Slug is a standard super alloy bullet for railguns. These are an effective way to counter Natibas at a low cost. Make sure to keep an eye on your remaining ammo. There is a saying that if you want peace, prepare for war. It's a proverb that goes well with Orca Aerospace Company's OBG-9000 Charge Blaster. This weapon charges and fires positron cells to erase enemies from the world and restore peace. The colony's particle control technology can now fight back against Natibas through self-enhancing designs. It sounds like magic, but that's not what it is. This AI optimizes everything for the user and evolves by analyzing the enemies that the user has dealt with. A monster's DNA will be the perfect food for it. Eidos Company built only one type of body and distinguished the trim by differentiating the built-in firmware. That means that, fundamentally, the performance of the body can be improved by updating the firmware. Of course, having body cores that come in contact with the body will also start a simple update procedure. Because the DNA structures of Natibas are always changing, the beta energy system that extracts and uses energy from their blood is fundamentally unstable. Defense companies such as Orca Aerospace constantly tried to secure and improve the samples. This came at the cost of many lives. In the year 2042, Eidos Company released an expansion module as an updated option for the rechargeable tumblers. It was very popular because of its reasonable price and ability to easily increase potion capacity. The modular gear expansion design from Eidos Company was both efficient and BM friendly. The company was able to sell gears and omnibolts, a component for unlocking. If the omnibolt was not fitted into the hole, the expansion socket would not work at all. The extreme nano element produced by Tetrastar is also known as a quantum nerve. Quantum nerves function as nanowires, processors, and even memories, making them an electrical engineer's dream come true, omnipotent, universal, and almighty. Aside from all this marketing jargon, no one knew what it actually was except for Mother Sphere. As humanity's semiconductor technology moved towards singularity, neither ordinary people nor Tetrastar's engineers could understand the device's design. It meant that an unknown artificial intelligence was creating things that couldn't be understood. The performance of the mass-produced devices created with the advanced design was unquestionable. Tetrastar killed off all of the competing foundry companies through its bold moves and then bought them to become the dominating company in the semiconductor market. Surprisingly, the issue of monopoly did not arise. The media only praised the stable supply of nano devices. Eidos Company's high-quality polymer materials boast amazing quality. 
They have excellent biomedical compatibility and can freely adjust color and properties according to electrical signals. It's used in the military, medical field, electronics, civil engineering, textiles, and household goods. You can find this material anywhere imaginable. The concept of making something gradually shifted toward printing, especially in the fashion industry. It became impossible to tell the difference between a clothing factory and a print shop. This meant that lumps, powders, and filaments of polymer materials were immediately turned into products. With the rise of blockchain platforms, cryptocurrencies became the mainstream of the market. People embraced the decentralized currency without many questions. However, after networks disappeared, all e-wallets became worthless, except for those that downloaded nodes and saved them to the coins. Precision parts that had been used for micro-drones, automatons, and droids became useless after civilization collapsed. It wasn't possible to manufacture such precise machines again, and they were too small to extract metal. However, they could be useful to someone, useful enough to exchange them for other valuable items. Legionnaire 451's Resolution Only death remains in this city. Humans who've lost all hope have locked themselves up and are waiting for death to take them. I think some areas of the orbit elevator are still functional. Let's use that to head out into space. Yes! The last words of the hopeless. Decades have passed since the appearance of Natibas and the evacuation of humankind to the colony. They say the airborne squad is descending to rescue the remaining humankind, but there is no sign. We can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. Lewis's testimony. Lucas, look up at the sky. There's something falling. I wonder what that is. I didn't hear the orbital explosion warnings go off. Lament of despair. The network has been destroyed. I'm completely disconnected from the colony's data link. We have nowhere to fall back to. Is this the Natiba's doing? Is the colony safe? What happened to Mother Sphere? I lost track of time, since even that won't automatically correct itself. For the sake of my own sanity, I must keep track of the calendar by force editing my memory stick. Plastic Hearts, Volume 3. S number 6. My love, wait. 1, 2, 3. 2, 2, 3. Try to do a little better. You said you danced to For Whom Does the Rose Smile With Me. I know I did, but can we go a little slower? With beauty, with grace, just as we were born. My little treasure, I am a hacking device. Cyberspace is my realm. I don't know how to dance like this. <laughs> right, right. You're dangerous and cute. And weak. There, I won. Quickly now, quickly. Sh should I lick the plug? Ah, dear Mother Sphere, please forgive your sinful daughter. Taki is the commanding officer of the 7th Airborne Squad. They say that in the colony's combat simulations, her speed was unmatched. Her name is Taki for a good reason. The 7th Airborne Squad gets obliterated by Natibas while entering the Earth's atmosphere. However, the mission is still a go. Taki finds Eve and intends to regroup with their squad. Yet, the Natibas onslaught practically wipes out Taki's squad. To make matters worse, an unidentified Natiba strikes without warning, leaving both Taki and Eve at death's door. In this desperate moment, Taki sacrifices herself to save Eve. There is still life in the flames of hope. Adam is a scavenger from Zion. He saved Eve's life from an unidentified Natiba. Though Eve did not trust him at first, Adam suggests that he and Eve work together, and so they arrive at 807. Thornheads are Natibas with thorny heads and long, fragile bodies. It is not known if they have organs for seeing or hearing, and little has been discovered about their biology. It is certain, however, that they attack in small groups. Creepers are small but deadly Natibas. They have razor-sharp tails and flexible bodies that can move in unexpected ways. Beholders are Natibas with gruesomely twisted bodies, sporting a bone saw blade on one arm. Their shape makes it difficult to distinguish their characteristics. However, when they stare at you with their beady, piercing yellow eye, it is easy to see why some call them Watchers. If you see any creepers with sparkling fluorescent spots on their red bodies, you must take caution. These large, strong monsters are veritable soldiers that guard their groups. Barnacles are Natibas with thick shells. Amongst the other Natibas that evolved amidst competition, contamination, and predation, they were smart enough to have powerful defense. In particular, 
Barnacle's shell-covered legs can be difficult to cut through with a single monomolecular cutter. Rather than living weapons, they are living shields. Crickets are natibas that look like a horrid mix of crickets and other living organisms. Their shells look like naked bodies and they can develop hard chitin arms depending on their need and role. Some natibas try to imitate things in their environment to adapt, and this natiba that looks just like a guardian statue is one of them. It is a dreadful monster with flesh and tendons hidden beneath its stony skin. While stone statues erode with time, natibas mimicking statues do not. Heavy guardians have killed, devoured, and constantly extended their own bodies to become uncontrollable, bloodthirsty giants. Hydras are hybrid natibas that look like aliens. The bags on their bodies allow them to float and they can move using magnetic fields. They can also camouflage themselves in their environments like assassins hiding in the ruins. Natiba are clearly adaptable creatures. At first, it was believed they were simply quick to mutate. However, when the enormous brutes ripped open machine cores to attach them to their tentacles and draw energy, we realized that the Natiba's evolutionary potential was limitless. Earth has been taken over by the monstrous species called Natibas. All of humankind evacuated to the colonies in space, leaving Earth a desolate wasteland. To take back what was theirs, the humans decide to wage war against the Natibas. However, the onslaught of Natibas made it practically impossible to even land on the surface. One by one, the airborne squad members fall, but Eve manages to crash land to Earth. With the help of her commander, Taki, Eve starts pushing onward in an attempt to join her comrades. But, just before they make it to the rendezvous point, Eve and Taki are caught in an explosion caused by a fallen vessel. Eve and Taki barely make it out, but the rest of the 7th airborne squad is wiped out. Eve falls into despair, but with Taki's encouragement, she stands once more. However, a black alpha natiba appears, ruthlessly attacking Taki, leaving her critically wounded while she tries to protect Eve. Eve, get out of here! Eve, barely conscious, can only watch as Taki dies. Suddenly, a smoke grenade lands in front of her, concealing her in smoke, and a stranger saves Eve and helps her escape the situation. The man's name is Adam. He says he is a scavenger, one of the few survivors left on Earth. Eve is suspicious of him, but there is no doubt that he is the reason she is alive, not to mention he fixed her body frame. Adam makes a proposal to Eve after hearing that her objective is to eliminate the leaders of the Natiba, the Alpha Natibas and the Elder Natiba. He offers to guide Eve to the location of an Alpha Natiba in exchange for her help in retrieving a hypercell from the Hall of Records, located in Eidos 7. Eve, who needs information about Alpha Natibas more than anything, agrees to Adam's offer and heads to Eidos 7 together.